dinner theaters and invite not only our regular troop members who perform here every weekend, but also some people who uh, performed for us years ago and have since moved on, and we got them to agree to come back and join our troop. So you're going to see people who are veteran, classic improv performers, along with some of our newest stars of the stage. So this is going to be a blast tonight. How many of you, is this, uh, don't raise your hand when I ask questions because I can't really see raise hands. Clap, okay? Clap if this is your first time seeing a show here at Steve Ray. Okay. We can do the old stuff, guys. <laughs> there is no old stuff because if, you, if you're not familiar with improv, we are going to be making it up on the spot all night long. I, as the host, I'm going to be asking you questions, and you're going to shout out an answer, whatever you want, and we're going to use that to create instant comedy right up here. How many of you have been upstairs to see a main stage show before, like the Maria and that kind of thing? So this will be, uh, this will be different. Okay? They don't let you yell out things during Mamma Mia. I try. They're very angry when you do that. Okay? So now, if you, if you want to yell out and, and be a part of the show tonight and call out your ideas, that's great. Do it as often as you want. If you don't feel like doing it, no problem at all. Just sit back and enjoy the show. Be aware that if I don't take an idea that you call out, it might simply be because I didn't hear you and there's 125 people in here all shouting at once. It could be that your idea sucked. There's always that possibility. We will let you know when that is. Okay? So we can all kind of point out. Usually it's obvious, but I like to make sure we all know. Uh, we, have some, uh, we have some people celebrating here tonight, and it's always fun when people choose our theater to come and celebrate and get some laughs on like an anniversary. Where's Ron and Judy Fuller? Raise your hand. Ron and Judy, right back there celebrating 38 years. also Judy's birthday, I understand. Very good. Very good. Happy birthday, Judy. Right over here, uh, some young punk named Logan Grant just turned 15. Yeah. Just coming from me, an older guy, uh, I don't like you. Okay. <laughs> your whole life ahead of you. Look at him, he's over there. All of my joints work. You know, that's just... I didn't have to worry about getting up and making sure everything was still there. Uh, oh, and we have a former improv student because we teach improv classes and a lot of people from the general public come and take a class just to learn to have fun and, and loosen up and be creative. Uh, and uh, Kathleen, where's Kathleen, our former improv student? Right over here? Right over there? Yes. And she brought... Her nieces are visiting from Tennessee, and one of them is in a Tennessee improv troupe. Very cool, very cool. Well, I'll make you feel at home. Y'all are funny. Okay. This here we say, you guys. You guys are funny. Okay. Uh, welcome back home. Are, you're from here and moved to Tennessee? You're from Michigan. Yeah. So forget it. Okay. <laughs> All I know about Michigan is it's shaped like a hand and nobody cares about it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we had a 38th anniversary, but where's Ted and Kathy Torkelson? Ted and Kathy, where are you? Raise your hand. And you're, you're at a 45th wedding anniversary. We should explain to the 
folks who live in Tennessee, Torkelson is a common name here. Okay? You don't find a lot of Torkelsons down in Tennessee. You know? That's Junior Torkelson. Doesn't doesn't really work. Where's Stacy Elstead? Happy birthday, Stacy! Right back there. Right back there. Happy birthday. Yes. All of her friends told us it was her birthday, and they didn't tell us which one. Which means they're good friends. Don't put up a number. Come on, leave her alone. Well, like I said, we have some special guests joining us tonight. Uh, and we have a troupe of the finest performers. Uh, they train hard to learn how to do improv. And it brings joy to not only them, but to the people who watch it. So we want to bring them out. Are you ready for a good show tonight? <laughs> Tonight, who first joined our group in 2003. Josh Awen is here. <laughs> Another veteran performer who joined us in 2008, Samantha Baker Harris. <laughs> Someone who joined us in 2017 and then decided to move down to Chicago and do improv in the big city, Annie Jackson is here. who joined in 2012 and has gone on to become one of the favorite actors and comedians in town, Joe Lovett! Yeah. This lady joined us in 2005 and has continued to perform improv all over the Twin Cities, Maureen Tubbs is here. When we, when, when, here, here's the co-founder. Everybody says Stevie Ray, Stevie Ray, Stevie Ray. I'm not in charge, okay? I have a business partner who started this company with me, and we've run it as a partnership ever since. Pamela Main, right here. Hey, Stevie. Yes? Uh, there's a very important person that's missing from the stage. I know, I'm getting to it. You uh -huh. just be quiet. That's okay. Joe. You met Joe earlier. He's our associate director. Shut up. Uh, there's a gentleman who started performing with us on the day we opened in 1989 and has been a colleague of ours ever since. A master at both music and comedy and performance art, Mr. Eugene Huddleston back there in the corner. Director, Mr. Mr. Matt Dorlin. Yeah. And another troop member, Kip Hathaway, join us on the stage. Oh no, you were there. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a steel trap right here, baby. All right. Uh, so, uh, we are going to have a great time with various styles and types of improv that we're going to see up here tonight. But let's start with something musical. Okay, so I'd like my singers to stay on stage. And everybody else go take a little break. All right. So, uh, we are going to start with something musical because we're at the Chan Hansen Dinner Theaters. We should start with something uh, that involves a little music. But because we do improvisational comedy, uh, we don't have pre-written lyrics, that would be cheating. So we're going to create a song out of lyrics that we get from you. So let's create one right now. Uh, we'll show you how this is done. Um, let's see. Sir, right here, uh, can I ask your first name? Larry. Larry. Uh, retired or working? Retired. Retired from what? What did you do? Financial. Financial advising or you were an accountant or what? U.S. Bank. Okay, you can sound happier. <laughs> You're retired. The rest of us have to get up on Monday. Okay. Okay. And so you you did finance for U.S. Bank. Yep. Okay. And then is uh, this is your family? Yep. Is this your wife here? Yes. Uh, your name, ma'am? Joyce. Joyce. 
What made Larry a really good finance person? What part of his personality? She's looking at him like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Our household budget sucks. <laughs> He's good with numbers. He's good with numbers. Okay, well, that goes under the duh column. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to just use all that to create a lyric for Aaron here. Uh, your lyric is, uh, Finance Larry is good with numbers. Okay? So now you can just create anything you want. For, for Maureen, we need a lyric. It could be a line from a movie that you remember, uh, you could use uh, a line from a TV show, something somebody said to you recently in, in real conversation, uh, it could be a literary quote, that's a book, uh, do you have one? I'm in the mood for love, okay, but for the show, we're a full service troupe, by the way, we just we have to make our money wherever we can, folks. Okay, I'm in the mood for love. Uh, that's yours. That'll be enough. Okay. Uh, for Annie, give me a lyric. How about a, how about a line from something that somebody said to you recently that's stuck in your head? Yes, sir. I'm moving to California. Okay. Uh, and uh, why? Make it up. We don't care. <laughs> for a job. Uh, what, what should the job be if they move to California? Firefighter. Firefighter. Okay. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for cheering us all up, lady. Thanks for coming to our little comedy show. I'm going to be a firefighter in California. Okay? Joe would love to meet a famous person. Who should he meet? Elton John. And if you had a chance to sit down and have coffee or lunch with Elton John, this would be the first thing you said to him. What's that? Why do you wear those glasses? There's a Minnesotan right there. So gaudy. I mean, it's like you want to be known after something. Samantha needs a lyric. Anything at all. What's that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> I'll just leave that alone. All right. What are our lyrics? Finance Larry is good with numbers. I'm in the mood for love. <laughs> I'm moving to California to be a firefighter. Why do you wear those glasses, Elton John? Hit me with your best shots. All right, uh, uh, Matt, can you turn this into a jazzy kind of opening song for us? Do it. <laughs>
We do our own music down here, and we don't need the ABBA to write it for us. Uh, for this next improv, uh, we are actually going to give you, the audience, a little bit more control than we feel comfortable giving you. Uh, because comedy is all about timing, we are going to allow you to decide the timing of this next improv. So what's going to happen, let's just say we have Brett and Ellie out here, and they're going to be, uh, begin performing an improv scene. Uh, so they've been performing, performing. When you want to see something different happen, you yell, freeze. Freeze! Good. They will freeze in whatever position they're in. Somebody from the side will tag one of them out, take on that position. Then that person, we have to start a whole new improv based on this position. So be kind. Okay? You keep yelling freeze over and over and over again, and I should mention that uh, Joe, our associate director in the booth, has a, a big role in tonight because we don't decide when an improv is over. He does. Yeah, we just keep going, and he says, okay, I've seen enough. And then he does that by blacking out the lights. So when the lights black out, that's your cue that we're stopping for a good reason. We paid our electric bill, there's not a problem, all right? So, you know, the, the, the freezes will continue to go on and on until he blacks out the lights. So, uh, as you yell freeze, remember, it's kind of hard to hear up here, so don't be Lutheran. Because <laughs> most nights it's like, well, freeze if you want to. <laughs> if it's a convenient thing to do, freeze. You know, just yell it out with some gusto, okay? Pretend you're from Michigan. They'll, they'll yell like crazy. There. All right. So let's have Kip and Brett out here to start. These two guys are busy trying to get something done. What are they trying to get done? Carpentry. Carpentry. <laughs> I don't know, it's getting dark. Maybe we should just pack it in. We gotta get this job done by seven. Freeze! Listen, I don't want to duel you today. Well, I'm just carving up the ham. No need to get the sword out. I mean, come on. I thought it would be more efficient. Okay. Here, use it. Uh, this baby is so ugly, Mama. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Could uh, for me yell out an emotion? Happiness. Happiness. Very good. And another one. Outrage. Outrage. Okay, two ends of the spectrum. <coughs> What's another one? Anger. What's yours, sir? Anger. Anger. I heard. Give me more. Constipation. Constipation is not an emotion. But we'll take it. Disturbed. Okay. Any emotion? Love. Euphoria. Flabbergasted. Somebody's been to college. Ornery. Ornery. Disgruntled. Oh, I'm sorry. Horny. Oh, horny. Okay. I thought you said ornery. Ornery and horny go together. Love. Love, I got. Neutral. Guilty. Anxious. Okay, that's good enough. That's good enough. I'll take anxious. All right. Wouldn't it be funny if I just didn't use any of this? Now? Let's do something different. Maureen and Samantha are going to begin a scene. We'll see how I use this to uh, move it along. So somebody tell me. Um, Maureen is about to tell something to Samantha that's very important. What is she about to tell Samantha? She's pregnant. Why is it always pregnant? I mean, it's like, okay, uh, apparently that's happening in the audience a lot. So, yeah, you have salad. What do you do? I'm sending a salad. All right, All right you're, you're, you've got a pregnancy announcement. You guys take it from there. Can I 
tell you the most exciting news of my life. Are you ready, friend? I am so ready hold because, it, hold because I am so ready to tell you that word. I am pregnant. pregnant. What? <laughs> I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. But we're going to Vegas. I just got to see it. No, Vegas. I cannot drink with my baby. Vegas equals drinking. But how did this happen? I thought you and Gary broke up weeks ago. You do know how it happens, right? I don't even like start from scratch. <laughs> Samantha, flabbergasted. We're gonna go to Vegas, and we're gonna just like meet new people. Yeah, I'm not leaving, Gary. Um, Gary and I, Gary and I renewed our vows. What? Yeah. Um, for legal reasons and just to really lock down that health care. Just really. Maureen, happy. Because we love each other, okay? I could help myself. Samantha, love. And you know what? I, I um, I touch it. Okay. <laughs> I think that was pretty much a normal everyday thing. Okay. All right. Uh, what we're going to do next will involve uh, just one idea from you, and then we are going to let that idea take hold, and the uh, troupe is going to do a whole series of scenes, one after the other, that all loosely have something to do with uh, what I'm about to get from you right now. So for that, uh, tell me what quality you think is important for every person to have. Sure. Common sense. Okay. Yeah, I could have also said what's most lacking, and we would have that. So what we're going to see now is scenes that all have something to do with common sense. You guys smell that? It's a dead rat. <laughs> Overwhelming. Yeah, we're gonna have to close the restaurant. That in. Okay. And, and you should have told us that before we asked for it. Well, uh, you know, I have to make those quotas. So, uh, what can I get you? Uh, we're, we're not staying. Well, you have to. Okay. Uh, the doors are locked. I just heard the door. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. but it's a new business model. <laughs> <laughs> What's the special? Dead what? rat. <laughs> Do you like the color of the living room? I, 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 uh, You hate it. No, you I didn't it. say that word. Which, I didn't get there yet. No, you didn't. <laughs> I picked out um, purple, raisin, purple raisin sunrise because I thought it would be soothing. I, I, I don't want to say things that are going to hurt your feelings. Oh my God. Yep. You're divorcing me. Well, I, I did it. <laughs> um, hey honey. I uh, lost your grandmother's ashes. What? <laughs>
me. I, oh my God, I, honestly, I don't think it matters. Okay? Uh, like, like, it, it's one of those things where, like, you're in the driver's seat, I'm in the passenger seat. Like, let's just... Okay, let's try it. Off, you know? Let's try it. Okay, get in. Okay. No, do, do I have to, like, slow open the doors? Or what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey! That's my way! I'm trying to get to work here! I love it! I love it! English people are yelling out. Sorry, Madam. Here you go. Oh, my God! You, you get... Hold, hold! That's all I wear. <laughs> That's also a problem. No, it's very hygienic. I can just put on socks and not have to worry about clean clothes as long as I keep my two pairs. I have two pairs of socks, Darla, okay? And I keep them very clean. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's natural, okay? Don't pretend like you've never seen a naked man walking around Byerly's before. <laughs> you to do any laundry anymore because you just kept messing it up. I thought you wouldn't stop. God, it's just all, all, all over the place, isn't it? Um, I'm just the way God made me. Uh, with socks on. With socks on. Is that how you came out of the womb? Yes. Yes. You know it's I had, I had natal stockings. <laughs> Get the marbles. Okay. 
Both of you in one cup? Well, you know, just mix us up. Put us That's in gross. Up. That's <laughs> disgusting. I, 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 I don't even want to think about that. Ew. Make, make uh. it a venti if it'll make you happy. I don't want to make it a grande. <laughs> Every, every show, there's one line that we go away thinking about and it sticks in our head. I think that line tonight will be, don't pretend you've never seen a naked man in buyer leaves before. <laughs> That'll be the line. Uh, one thing that we've missed doing up to this point is, is classic comedy, and that's telling some jokes. Good old-fashioned jokes. Uh, so we're going to do that right now. Uh, the joke goes like this. 185 guys walk into a bar. Typical joke. You're going to tell us who those people are walking into the bar. And the troop is going to come up with punchlines that fit whoever is walking into the bar. So, for instance, you see here with the, the shirt and tie right there. What do you do for a living? Software engineer. Software engineer. We're going to have 185. We're going to start with that. We're going to do some more, so be ready. We're going to start with 185 software engineers going into a bar. Uh, 185 software engineers walk into a bar. Barker says, sorry, we don't serve software engineers. And here they say, wow, this bites. <laughs> software engineers walk into a bar bar and said, listen, no, we don't serve software engineers here. The software engineer says, because, is it because, is it because we're bi a <laughs> 185 software engineers walk into a bar bar and says, hey, we don't serve software engineers here. 185 software en engineers said, huh, ram it. <laughs> walk into a bar and the bartender says, I'm sorry we don't serve software engineers here. The software engineers say, well, geez, it's kind of gross in here anyways. There's no windows. <laughs> okay, here are the rules. When they say a joke, you're allowed to go, hey, that was really funny. <laughs> if it's a really good joke, really let them know. If the, if the joke bombs, yay, that was really funny. Okay. <laughs> Those are your two options and that's all you got. Okay? None of that last thing I heard is, <laughs> you up here. You want to try this crap? You know, it's not as easy when you're up here. Alright. Uh, 185? What's that? Gastroenterologist. What I'll just Gastro... Gastroenterologist. Okay. Brett, that's a person that deals with the stomach. Thank you. <laughs> Gastroenterologists walk into a bar. Bartender says, "Hey, we do not serve gastroenterologists here." And 185 gastro gastroenterologists went, "Gee, I, gee, I." So 185 gastroenterologists walk into a bar, bartender says, hey, we don't serve a gastroenterologists here. So the gastroenterologists say, well, we'll just take the gastro exit, darling. <laughs> <laughs> 185 gastroenterologists walk into the bar, and the bartender says, uh, we don't serve gastroenterologists. And the gastroenterologists say, fine, you know what, next time I'll just trust my gut. <laughs> Gastroenterologists walk into a bar, but says, sorry, we don't serve GI doctors. Uh, and they said, wow, this really stinks. <laughs> Thanks for yelling that out during a dinner show, by the way. 185? <laughs> Concierges. <laughs> concierge. Is the plural concierges or concierge I? <laughs> So 185 concierges walk into a bar and the bartender says, Hey, we don't serve concierges here. And the concierge say, Yeah, ah, that rings a bell. Wow. Hey. 185 concierges walk into a bar. Bartender says, Hey, we do not serve concierges here. And 185 concierges told them where to go.
I don't really care. <laughs> That's right, you do whatever you want, Kip. <laughs> What was the prompt? Sorry, no, just kidding. Uh, 185. Bart! Veterinarian! Ah! Walk into a bar, the bartender says. No, no, no. Not today. We don't serve large veterinarians here. This is a vet bar. And a large veterinarian say, well, what about the elephant in the room? Hundred and eighty-five large, I believe you pronounced it. Uh, veterinarians walk into the bar. The bartender says, sorry, we don't serve large veterinarians. And the large veterinarians say, well, we'll move on out of here. Hundred and eighty-five large veterinarians who were coming down with a cold walked into a bar. The bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't serve large veterinarians coming down with a cold. And they said, we're sorry, we're just a little horse. <laughs> secret that we live right now in a very politically charged atmosphere and at Stevie Ray's we, we stay away from two things during our show. We don't do dirty comedy and we also try to stay away from politics because neither one is funny. All right, uh, But there are some questions that ha have been running through all of our minds and we really need people we can ask uh, those questions too. So we, we'd like to thank you for being tonight's delegates to the UN conference at Stevie Ray's. Here is a chance for you to ask questions of the people who represent uh, different countries. And uh, we, we have three different countries being represented tonight. And because these are non-English speaking countries, we have provided interpreters for your, uh, for your, for your pleasure. So we have, uh, first of all, we have the country of Uruguay. Uruguay. We have, okay, because we've all been wondering about Uruguay. The country of... North Korea. What's that? North Korea. Thank you for bringing levity to the show. Uh, Uruguay, North Korea, and... Canada. Canada. We'll take it. Okay. They're almost as hotly contested as North Korea. So now I want you to start thinking of questions you've always wanted to ask uh, somebody from Uruguay, North Korea, or Canada, and it could be about their country, it could be about their impression of the United States, it could be anything at all. Uh, and I will get things started by asking our interpreter to ask our guest from Uruguay about their first impression. Uh, upon visiting the United States. I saw three Starbucks on the same corner. <laughs> That, 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 it's quite an impression, yes. Uh, our guest from North Korea, their first impression of the United States. <laughs> he says he's very happy to visit country of the guy who works there. <laughs> Almost looks as if he didn't know he said that. Uh, and he laughed and doesn't speak English, so. Alright. Uh, Canada, first impression of the United States. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. A ma a maple syrup. A mousse. You betcha, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, no true <laughs> We got a hottie up north. Okay, good. That's, that's all we wanted to know. 
Here's your chance, folks. You don't have to raise your hand. You just shout out the name of the country that you have a question for, Uruguay, North Korea, Canada, and shout your question out. Go ahead. Just shout one out for me right now. For North Korea. For North Korea, yes. Why didn't you split into West and East Korea? <laughs> you know, that, I've been thinking that same thing. Yeah. I mean, come on. Why North and South instead of East West? Don't you think we'd do a lot better at the real UN? <laughs> uh, any questions for Uruguay or Canada? Yes, sir. Yes, for Canada. For Canada. What's your question? When are you going to annex Minnesota and Dakotas? Yes, when is Canada going to annex Minnesota and the Dakotas? questions for Uruguay. What's the deal with uh, them and Paraguay? Yeah, yeah, that's it. What's the deal with them and Paraguay? <laughs> really? Come on. What's the deal with you and Paraguay? Uh, for support, they, they put up on the, the, the Paraguay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Paraguay? No, no, no. Uh, 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 <laughs> We're worth more in Scrabble. <laughs> Thank you for our uh, Next, we're going to feature our special guest, Eugene Huddleston, at the keyboard, who is going to uh, challenge our next two performers here. Uh, let's have Ellie and Kip up here. Uh, I'll get this started. Do you want to take them now or as we go? Got it. You got it? Yep. So it's all yours. Ladies and gentlemen, Eugene Huddleston. It's so wonderful being here. <laughs> hey folks. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do song style. So I want you to shout out your favorite or maybe your least favorite song styles right now. Jazz, polka. Jazz, I heard. Polka's one of my favorites. Country. Jazz, polka, country. Yeah. Rap. Rap. Yeah. On a piano. Punk rock. You remember I was actually in a punk rock band. Opera. Uh, opera. opera. I was actually in an opera band. Like soul. Cool. From this bad table. We have disco. Heavy metal on a piano. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> Anything else? Disco. Reggae. Disco. Reggae I heard here in disco. I think that's enough. Like, we've, No, I hate all of them. But, <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to play Gary Brothers. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Stupid music. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Elle, come on out. Kip. And I've just met you tonight. Very nice to meet you. He's a great performer, isn't he? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and of and they're actually great singers. So here's what we're going to do. I want to start a scene in which L wants something more than anything else in the world. What is it? Strawberry banana yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> How 
have I become that old where I go, that's kind of a shallow dream? <laughs> what is it, Lovey? Strawberry banana yogurt. The, she wants a strawberry banana yogurt. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Kip actually wants something more important. <laughs> I've just decided. Stupid side? <laughs> My people. So we have yogurt for you. Yes, and for Kip. What? He wants to go fishing. <laughs> I've just decided. Stupid. Okay, that's cool. So, what are your what are your dreams? Uh, I want to go fishing. Want to go fishing, El? Strawberry banana. Okay, so at any point, we'll <laughs> let them start the scene and see what happens, and then we'll add the music that you want. Cool. So go ahead, and start the scene. <coughs> oh, sorry, Sonny. They're uh, sorry, honey. They're out of dandles. <laughs> okay. I just brought Chobani original recipe. Like. Oh, light. Yeah. No, this is this is this is this is unacceptable. What? We have to go back. We have to go to Byerly's. Well, I said, uh, you know, my, my my big trips today. I got my rod and everything. Yeah. So. Oh, I, can't you put it off for a couple hours? We have to go to Byerly's. Freeze. Let's start with jazz. <laughs>
in Minnetonka, but she's downtown. <laughs> Eugene Huddleston at the keyboard over there. Eugene. All right, we're going to end the first act by playing everybody's favorite daytime game show. Who recognizes that theme? during the day. <laughs> Larry Stecker, I watch it every day. <laughs> we have three fabulous contestants, Maureen, Joe, and Aaron. Who will be the Jeopardy champion? Well, let's find out. But first, we need categories for tonight's game of Jeopardy. Uh, we all know the game of Jeopardy has categories that are general things like geography or uh, U.S. presidents or something like that. Give me a category. African animals. Uh, African animals is one category. What's that? Words that start with letter You know what? Every time we've done a letter thing, it sucks. And that's because it's so confusing. So not against you, but it, it's a good one. We're not going to take it. Okay? But, yeah, it's just, it, it, it always turns out into a train wreck. Okay? What's that? Woodworking tool. Woodworking. I'm going to have just woodworking as a general category. So we've got uh, African animals, woodworking. I'll take as a general category. Four syllable words. Four syllable words. <laughs> he hasn't talked all night. <laughs> now he wakes up. And it's his birthday. He, it's a, is it your birthday, sir? Happy birthday, Happy birthday to this guy. So what? You get to a certain age and you don't care how much you torture people on stage. <laughs> All right, so we have African animals, we've got clothing, we've got uh, woodworking, woodworking, and uh, four-syllable words, which means their response must be a four-syllable word, and also their responses must be in the form of a question. Yes, so, uh, Maureen, grab your buzzers, everybody, and Maureen is our returning champion. We've got woodworking, clothing, four-syllable words, or African animals. What's tonight's first category? I'm going to go with African animals. Please. African animals. The answer is... Elephant. What is an elephant? Elephant. We do the what is part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> elephant. <laughs> Joe. What for some reason is always in the room? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Joe. Maureen. Elephant. What I no longer say in the mirror thanks to counting points. That's correct. <laughs> Chop saw. Chop saw. Uh, Maureen. What I ate last week and still is not agreeing with me. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Aaron, 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 chop saw. Uh, what I looked at and turned out to be a pork chop. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, Joe, chop saw. What will you never see a Fisher Price version of? That's <laughs> correct. After that one time, they took it off. Joe, select a category. Four syllable words. Okay, here we go. Remember, you don't do the four syllable word, but that's their part. The answer is. The villain of a story. The what? The villain of a story. The villain of a story, and Maureen. What is Maleficent? <laughs> Maleficent. That's correct. Oh, come on, folks. That's really hard. Clothing and woodworking. Oh, um, clothing. Clothing. The clothing. answer is toga. Toga. <laughs> and Maureen. What does not work on Casual Friday? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Joe, toga. What do you find on your feet after you're going to a frat party? <laughs> Uh, what is that term? My marathon. I looked at my feet, and uh, that's what it was. And Marines was correct. <laughs> so, I, I'm sorry, Aaron. The responses must be in the form of coherent. So, uh, Let's go back to woodworking. Woodworking. Please. The answer is. Bandsaw. What's that? Bandsaw. Bandsaw. Joe. What do you use when you want to cut your band in half? <laughs> That's correct! I like the 
two, three. Oh, I get it. Okay. <laughs> Some of you on the way home are gonna go. Okay. Now I know. So look, the category Joe. Four syllable words. Four syllable words. The answer is. What is the meaning of life? No, we need the what is part. Minnesota twins. Minnesota twins. <laughs> Joe! What is damn lost again? <laughs> Which in Minnesota is a single word. <laughs> so look to category Joe. Clothing. Clothing, the answer is. Sure. What's the shoes? Shoes. <laughs> Aaron. What is what I say to the flies when I've left my cereal in the sink for too long? <laughs> Let's give it one, shall we? No, you don't have to explain it again. No, no, no. The rule in comedy is if you have to explain a joke, it's not funny. I would do it backwards. <laughs> From, uh, from Aaron. Let's uh, let's do uh, African animals. African animals, because that worked so well so far. <laughs> the answer is Correct. tiger. 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 Hurry. Uh, what is not appropriate to call your boss? <laughs> Final Jeopardy. All of our contestants are going to wager everything they have based on their knowledge of one Final Jeopardy category. That new category is organs of the body. What's that? Organs of the body. What's wrong with the old people in the room? You're just angry or something. Just, no, no, I'm sorry, sir. Older. Okay. <laughs> Organs of the body. Okay, be thinking about what you know about organs of the body. Uh, they're all going into this round completely tied because I forgot to keep score. So, <laughs> under organs of the body, the answer is stomach. Liver. I heard over here. Liver. Write your response. Thank you for that lovely theme, Matt Dorman. Thank you. All right. On the category of organs of the body, liver. Aaron, your response. What is what you live and let liver? <laughs> you can draw it out. No, fine. you don't know. No, you don't know. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That's not the response to anything for the whole night. Uh, you leave with nothing. I'm so sorry. Oh, Joe, your response to liver. What is the correct answer when the choices are lover or liver? <laughs> You're going home with Aaron. <laughs> Maureen, it's down to you. You could beat the Jeopardy champion, and it's quite likely, unless you pass out without responding, <laughs> you have a shot. Your response to liver. What am I only willing to donate if it's with onions? <laughs> quick 10 minute intermission. Make sure to like us on Facebook for a chance to win two free tickets. So come on back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for the second act of Stevie Ray's Comedy Cabaret for our 30th anniversary celebration. What Yes, give it up for your host tonight, Mr. Stevie Ray! You all came back, that almost never happens. <laughs> well, especially people who are from like really far away suburbs. You know, coming to the Chan House, and for some people it's like, oh man, the Chan House, oh, bring a lunch. <laughs> oh man, it's a piece down there. <laughs> And you know what else is funny? How many people, when I walk out, actually are surprised that I exist? <laughs> a lot of audience members.
members, uh, because I'm not at all the shows, a lot of audience members come up to the troop after the show and say, there's really not a TV Ray, is there? They think it's like Captain Crunch. <laughs> so some of the younger ones are like, Captain Crunch isn't real? What? Well, as Joe mentioned before the show, if you went online and liked our Stevie Ray's Facebook page, I will explain Facebook later, sir. Uh, <laughs> not a book of faces, okay? It's like, oh, nice picture of faces. Uh, if you liked our Facebook page, you might win a chance for two free tickets to come back to another show. So, where is Stephanie Pierzina? Right here, Stephanie, give her a hand. Yes. Okay, you can bring her if you want. You don't have to. All right. The cool thing is, it's a different show all the time because the improvs are different every night. We change them around. We have dozens of things we can play, and also ideas from the audience are different, so it changes it all the time. So uh, that way, you never see it the same show twice here at Stevie Ray's. So let's get the second act started by doing something uh, again, a little musical. This is going to be a little bit more challenging of a musical piece. Because what we're going to do is create a brand new song that has never been done before with your help. What I want you to start doing right now is conjuring up a brand new title for a song. Maybe if, if you were to write a song about your life, this would be the title of that song. Or just you come up with something that you think is cool and creative. We will take, so it can't be a real song title, okay? So don't yell out somewhere over the rainbow or something like that. When you call out this new created title, uh, Matt Dorland will use that as inspiration to create a brand new, never before heard piece of music, and a troop member will come out and sing an entire song that has to do with the title following the music. This is why I sit out most of the show. <laughs> so we want to debut the new song called Shake My Pepper Shaker. <laughs> song it was back in the disco era. I think NSYNC did it, didn't they? Okay, okay. so uh, does that inspire? No, don't apologize. I'm not the one who's got to sing it. Good luck to Noah. You got it? Something? Oh, look, Matt, he is inspired by that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to bring you the debut of Shake My Pepper Shaker. <laughs> Joe 
know, love it. He just is recovering from back surgery and came here anyway to perform for us. So, so this move was not easy. Yeah, I'm not doing that again twice. I can tell you that. It's an ibuprofen right now. <laughs> He's over here pulling out dollars going, keep it on. <laughs> Let's do another one, Matt. Yeah, uh, 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 the debut of the new song. My wife ran away with my dog and I sure do miss it. <laughs> Any title at all. I didn't get the job. What about the geriatric boogie? <laughs> No, I'm sorry, we're not. I go, that's, that's, like, that's been done as a country song. I didn't get the job. I didn't get the job. Did you not really get a job, man? No, I just like to Okay, you just like to say that. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, I'm going to add something to that. What job didn't the person get? Zookeeper. Zookeeper. <laughs> I didn't get the zookeeper job. That sounds like a real meaty song, doesn't it, Matt? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? I didn't get the zookeeper job. <coughs> <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, I'm well, thank you. Yeah, my teacher, listen, the only friends I have are all my stuffed animals, and they don't talk much. Susie, can you take your retainer out? Oh, sure. <laughs> listen, nobody likes me, and it makes me very sad. I don't know how to make people like me. I can only make my stuffed animals like me, and that's because I bought them. I'll tell you what, I'll give you Logan's number later. Next caller, please. <laughs> Uh, hey, this is Dave at Speedway. <laughs> Dude, you're all that's getting me through the night. Yeah, I, uh, I've been told that before. But the, thing, but the thing about the previous caller is, you know, stuffed animals are great and everything, but I prefer, like, getting items that you would buy, say, at a Speedway. <laughs> Setting them out on the counter and pretending that they're your friends. <laughs> you don't know the meaning of love until you've had a heart-to-heart -heart with a Take 5 bar. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> man, I will never, never date a Frappuccino again. <laughs> It's just too complicated. <laughs> Let me go and hang up on you now. Next caller, please. WS Red Radio, CB Rays Radio, you're on the air. Oh, yeah, uh, hey, I don't, I don't want to be a bother. I, uh, I just thought I'd call in. I, I heard the people talking about being lonely, and, uh, you know, I got stuck in a blizzard here, and uh, I didn't want to be imposed or anything, so I haven't called for help. Um, <laughs> Instead, that's, that's nice. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, I heard the people talking and, you know, talking about talking to food and stuffed animals, and I got that here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I mean, I should probably let you go here so that I can, you know, watch the snow collect on the hood. But hey, before I... <laughs> Is this going to be one of those, uh, you know, 15 minutes or something to buy? Oh, gosh, no, no. But just one more thing before we go. Yeah, of course. Uh, I was uh, over at Marjorie Anderson's house the other day. Of course, Marjorie, and, yes. Yeah, and her son, you know, he just got a job. Get out. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's selling used video games now. I didn't know those things were still so popular. Wow, the used ones, huh? Yeah, yeah, the used ones. I guess they, they buy them, and yeah. they play with them, and then, you know, they send them back or something. I don't know. Yeah, so anyways, I should probably get going here. Uh, the gas is getting a little low. Oh, but before I do... Uh, I got all nights. That's right. Yeah, that's great. I do too. I mean, until my battery dies out here. You know. uh, anyway, let's call it this. Go and call here on the air. WS Ray Radio. Stevie Ray's or Radio. Uh, hi there. Hi there, gentlemen. It's 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 Janice and um and I my husband my husband is at my husband Stan. I've lost him to the basement. And uh, he's, some, he's playing some sort of game called Zelda. <laughs> and, I, and I just don't understand. Is it a person? Is that a real person? Or is, he, is, he, is it a game? Is it really a game? I miss him, Jogan. <laughs> no one understands Zelda. Next caller, please. <laughs> Go and call here on the air. We use a, accept a collect call from Stillwater Prison. <laughs> Thank you for blanking that out when you did, Joe. <laughs> uh, now, Eugene and I have been working together since 1983, actually, was when we first, first got together. Uh, and like I was young, he was young, and now he looked at him. He was old. Yeah. And I stayed out of the sun, and he smoked, so there you go. Lesson to you kids out there, stay off drugs. <laughs> yes, because you're going to kill me. Uh, <laughs> I think I already did. 
Eugene actually created this next improv that we are going to do, and so we're going to do it in honor of him. What are we doing? Silent scene. Oh, yes. So we call it silent scene uh, because I will not be speaking throughout this entire next improv. <laughs> to picking on the front row, sir. Okay. Especially with somebody who looks like he should be a cruise director. <laughs> There's shuffleboard on the Lido deck. <laughs> That's Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> okay. Thank you, old people. Uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, get ready to actually uh, do some, some performing here because in this next improv, uh, we are going to feature Eugene. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to move, man. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. That's as far as we go. Because long ago, we were having a conversation where Eugene noted that, you know, the, 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 the pianist, the music director, doesn't have any uh, music sheets back there. They're playing completely improvisationally all night. But a lot of people forget that what happens over there can drive what happens here. So what we're going to do is we're going to feature Eugene by having me perform a mind <coughs> silent scene uh, where I do an activity. That way you really get to hear the music underneath it, okay? Let, let's do this. Yes. For the first part, whatever you ask. Whatever I do, uh, I you will follow. Underscore you. You'll underscore the first thing. So I need an activity like hanging the Christmas tree lights, or shuffleboard. going, shuffleboard is good, but it's kind of repetitive. Ice fishing. Ice fishing. Okay, there's a lot to that. Okay. <laughs> so, much more complicated than the rest of these. It's not like 12 hours of drinking. That's... I'm going to take ice fishing, yes, I'm going to take ice fishing, so I'm going to go backstage, and when I come out, I will mime ice fishing and Eugene will accompany me. So you gave me ice fishing. <laughs> um, what? I'm sorry, I can't hear my ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> scene over again. However, Eugene is going to play whatever he wants, and I will have to adjust how I perform to fit the music instead of the other way around. Woo! Yeah, so that's very good. Yeah. Which is one of 
and I hope I haven't pissed Eugene off. Yeah. <laughs> we can say this. Yeah. <laughs> no. We can't. No. Okay. Okay. Anything you need to ask? And I don't know this piano. So you. So. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to change. You're going to experiment and go experiment, with it. see what it does. Okay. And I have to just follow along. Okay. So here we go. I'll let you start the music, okay. and I'll be my end. Are you ready? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> ideas down on slips of paper. I'd like you to hold those ideas up, the slips of paper, hold them up for us, please. Uh, high above your head, and uh, our folks are going to come out there and grab them from you. So, go ahead. What's that? It's too late. Yeah. You get to keep that so you give me a debit card. That's a, that's a tip. are not looking at these uh, ideas that you wrote down. Uh, you were supposed to write down lines of dialogue. So, in this next improv, while Josh and, <laughs> while Josh and Joten are performing, uh, every now and then they're just going to pull a slip out and read it. And that has to fit somehow into what they're doing up here. So some of you are now thinking, I wish I didn't write down what I wrote. Okay. Uh, and if you see them talk, uh, if you see them look at one and just discard it, it means it's not for polite company. Okay. Uh, so let's get these two started. Um, how about a? Uh, uh, they've just returned from an event. 
What event? Comedy show. They've just returned from a comedy show. All right, take it away, gentlemen. <laughs> that ice fishing thing, my God! I couldn't follow it at no. all. No, it got really weird. I laugh because people laugh. That's all, right? <laughs> That's how I am with you most of the time. Oh wait. Um. By the way, Grandma ate way too many onions and has gas. <laughs> Your grandma. That's not my grandma. My grandma. That's some weird stanky business. <laughs> Toss that hat. You don't like? This is a fedora, man. I know it looks dumb. This is like a three hundred. We're not in uptown, dude. This is a three hundred dollar hat. Three hundred dollars? Three hundred. I can't tell you how depressing that is. <laughs> you get a three hundred dollar hat. I gotta sleep with grandma. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's she dumb. stinks. She got farts. She ate too much of that. Look, Daddy, I pooped in the body. Want to see it? Real quick, do you love me? Will you love me forever? Me love? <laughs> the parties will start until the Minnesota girl shows up. Hey! <laughs> Minnesota girls and stuff. May the force be with you, Troy. <laughs> With grandma, you're gonna bring grandma. Minnesota grandma is doing a good job tonight. She was really doing a fine job. You know, I, did she make that mess in the pie, or was that? <laughs> is that grandma who took that job? The doctor said I shouldn't use a tampon because I'm a dude. <laughs> Everybody's use. Everybody. They call me the bra the brass. What's going on? It's, it's a blast. Quick, quick, you uh, B words. Stuck in the middle with you is what I gotta say. Stuck in the middle with you. Where's grandma? She's sleeping. Gross. Yeah. Sleeping in poop. They always see yeehaw, but they never ask me hey me. They touch the ground. I missed the toilet earlier. It's all over, Dad. I'm sorry. Don't stop! The cat's in the cradle with the silver spoon. Real tomato ketchup, Betty? Sorry, Dad. Just think about it. I will. You know, I was talking to Grandma yesterday. She told me, she said, uh... What's that again? But she told me something really good. She said, she said to me, she said, tell dad, she said, Jumanji! Yes, you are a weird group of people. We're going to get you some help real soon. There's a comedian that I like, uh, Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, because he created that classic routine, you know you're a redneck if. Well, we think we can outdo Mr. Foxworthy because he has all the time in the world to write those jokes. We're going to come up with them on the spot. And instead of a redneck, you're going to surprise us with you know you're a something else, and we're going to have the troop coming up with the, the Foxworthyism. Now, I think because this is a special night, where we are having uh, veteran performers, alumni, uh, perform with our current troop members. We're going to have a little contest here. We're going to have the current troop members face off against the alumni veterans over here. Yes. And uh, after one section is done, however many jokes are told based on the idea, Joe will award a point to either side based on audience response. So basically, you're leading this whole thing. Uh, you ready, Joe? Let's do it. Yes, sir. All right. Instead of a redneck, you know you're a... Car salesman. Car salesman. Car salesman. If and when people ask you what you do for a living, you're shamed. It might be a car salesman. <laughs> if and you've never slapped a child, but you've slapped many hoods.
thousands of cars. <laughs> you might be a car salesman. <laughs> of a good value is a Yugo that's only been underwater twice. <laughs> you might be a used car salesman. If uh, your favorite scent of Axe body spray is leather, <laughs> you might be a used car salesman. You got all the trees in the forest that could hang from your rear view mirror. You might, you know. All right. If then you understand that bumper to bumper, don't cover that. <laughs> Submarine Commander. Is that the same guy that said four syllable word? This just as mean to me. Submarine Commander. If everybody else in the Navy hated you, you might be a submarine commander. And you can say semen with a straight face. <laughs> Soundproof uh, men's room. Uh, <laughs> flush a lot so we can't hear. Now, what's a 30th anniversary without a 30th, 30th anniversary party? So we're gonna have a little party up here. Yeah, that guy's leaving, so now we'll have fun. Right. We've been waiting all night. Okay. Take the four-syllable guy with you. Have a look around. You ever had a party at your house? 
and toward the end of the night you look around and think, where did all these weirdos come from? <laughs> yeah, strange people showing up at your party. Well, here they are, right here. <laughs> Joe is going to have to guess who is at his party. So, for Ellie, give me somebody who is in the news that you wish wasn't anymore. Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Dividing the house in half for us, sir. <laughs> there will be a fight in the parking lot later. <laughs> or Nancy Pelosi. Okay, yes. Uh, okay, so. I don't know, I was okay. Kip is. Uh, he is. No, no, no. Uh, let me ask. Let me ask. He is the last person in the world you'd ever want showing up at your party. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> Current occupant of the Oval Office. Aaron! Aaron is uh, uh, an ancient historical figure, real or fictional. Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> real or fictional. Yeah. Real or fictional, depending on your point of view. Okay. Josh is somebody, oh, you would love to have this person at your party. Darth Vader. Darth Vader. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maureen. Maureen is not a person. She is a thing that you can't touch, like love or gravity or. Why? Cactus. Why? You can't touch a cactus. I tell you that. So now, when Joe comes back, he's going to have to guess who or what is at this party. So, let's remind you of what we have. Nancy Pelosi. Donald Trump. Jesus. I am your father. I'm time. All right. Everybody get ready for the party. Uh, on the count of three. Uh, could you open that door for us, ma'am? Uh, our lovely hostess is going to open the door. Everybody yell, hey, come back. One, two, three. Hey, Good. Seriously, if we don't open that door, it is really solid and you can't hear it. Good. Joe is coming back. While Joe is guessing, do not yell out anything that would give it away because that's cheating. What you can do is while he's guessing, if he says something correct, give him a little applause. Let him know he's going in the right direction. More correct, more applause. When he finally guesses it, nail it, and he gets a big round from you. Uh, as he moves from party guest to party guest. Okay, you're hosting the 30th anniversary party right here. Let's see who shows up. All right, cool. My gosh, we've got weenies, we've got salad, we've got really nothing else. <laughs> hey, the Archie's on CD. Cool. This is going to be the best party ever until like the next one. Yeah, come on in. Did you knock on the door? Yeah, I did. Oh, all right. Well, hi. Um, hi, I'm, just, I'm going door to door. Um, I figured um, it'd be the best way to sign the sign. This, would you sign this petition? Oh, oh. We gotta, we gotta it get all them. depends. What's it for? We gotta get them out. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. We do. Who are we talking about? Um, in the current leader of our country, he needs to go. Um, and I, I just thought instead of uh, instead of going like broadcasting, that would be more efficient. I thought, why not less efficient? Go door to door. Door, door to door. Yes. Well, why why not get people to vote maybe for you? Well, oh, I, 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 I no, I already got a position. You do? Yeah. Is it oh. for somebody? Um, no, it's it's well, kind of. It's for a house. Well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wow, damn! That is going to hurt 
Twilight. Do you know Darth Vader? And so, Elizabeth, I am so glad to have oh, you. Oh, no, I'm not that old. Oh, really? I don't think so. Okay. Did <laughs> <laughs> you just perhaps arise from a mist somewhere, Marianne Williamson? <laughs> I have to tell you, I don't know. You're from one of those godless states like California, aren't you? I am from California. I owned it by accident. Mm -hmm. It was an accidental opening. Hey, this woman, I like her so much, I'm gonna give her some applause next time. Yeah. 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 Where do you keep leaving? Hey, buddy, thanks for letting me hang out. Oh, glad to. <laughs> do you want me to come in now or later? <laughs> now or later? I can do both. <laughs> wow. Thank you for being the most normal person at the party so far. <laughs> and prompt. That is correct. You know what, Miss Manners? I'm so glad to have you here. Perhaps you could help me with uh, the lead singer from REO Speedway. <laughs> If she was here, she would remind you in two short weeks to turn me back. Mm. Oh. Want some water? Oh. Wink. <laughs> is there a special something about this water? Yeah, there is. Wait a minute. I don't know if you want to get your hands in there if you're a clock. Oh, the clocks. They represent me so well. I'm a simple man. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. I'm a big deal. <laughs> You're right, especially if you occur on the international date line and people don't know where oh, to turn you. Oh, you totally speak in my language. Oh, that stuff is my baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely right, but I like you so much, I'm keeping you here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting this turn into some real good stuff. It was an 85, and now it's a 69. <laughs> You'll never stop scaring me, will you? Nope. Listen, did you come by yourself? Because there's 12 other guys waiting for you outside. 12 other guys? I don't have enough food. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> say his dad created this, right? <laughs> but uh, wherever it came from, here I am. Then Lord, I'm over here much later. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't get it the first I, I time. Didn't even, <laughs> I don't even know how we would have kept track of those first three days because you weren't created until the third day, son. Oh, yes, the son does help keep track of me, for sure. Listen, if we were back in the 1940s and I was hitting on 
on you, I'd say we were making me. <laughs> you know what? It doesn't appear as though anyone else is showing up at the party. No! <laughs> Look at that! Look at that watch again! Oh, I know, Time. <laughs> yeah. Look at all like Big Ben. <laughs> Can somebody tell me why the Target Center is so hard to find? <laughs> some of you for coming. <laughs> now, if you enjoyed the show, do me a favor. Don't we all know somebody who needs a good laugh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially that one person who really needs a good laugh. Before you go to bed tonight, do me a favor. Uh, send them an email. Uh, send them a Facebook message. Tweet. Send them a letter. Sir. Uh, <laughs> for us to celebrate our 30th. And one other thing we're doing to celebrate our 30th is, I mentioned before that we teach improv classes, and uh, what we discovered along the way was we started getting phone calls from uh, special organizations that needed help, uh, and needed us to teach their folks vital communication skills. So for 30 years we've been volunteering at domestic abuse shelters, homeless shelters, at-risk youth programs, to help people learn skills to get jobs and get a home and stabilize their life. So we want to build these skills. <laughs> and recently, the Skills for Life project, as it's called, has been getting more and more calls from organizations that want us to come out and help them. And we never charge for this. So we have our 30 by 30 campaign. We're trying to raise $30,000 by the end of our 30th year this year. So if uh, 30 people right over here each gave a thousand bucks. <laughs> I'm excluding you, sir. I see the nose ring. We're not going to ask you. <laughs> no, seriously, you can either go on our website and hit donate and give us what you can, or there's a, a donation uh, bin right back there on the wall. It says Skills for Life Donations. Drop a five, ten, three thousand dollars in there uh, on your way out. That would help us help others. All right? Uh, so, we're going to finish the same way we started, with some music. But we're, we're going to do the kind of music that Minnesota is best known for. That, of course, is the blues. <laughs> we're not going to sing what we're blue about. We're going to sing what you are blue about. What's been getting you down lately? The Vikings! The Vikings! The weather! The weather! Basically, every Minnesota sport, unless it's played by women. Uh, okay, the Twins, the Vikings, and the weather. Uh, we're going to sing the blues about that. Uh, you, you ready to kick it off with me, Mr. Matthew?
that's no surprise to me. You see, I'm used to watching the Minnesota Vikings. And it's April, it's June, it's May, it's October, who knows? All you gotta know is that you better just expect it to snow.